welcome to the channel. Today it's just a little mini tip that I hope will help you to enjoy your Native American flute even more than you already do. So grab your favorite medium A Native American or Native American style flute and let's get on with it. This mini tip can be summed up in three words. Fingers stay home. Now, when we're playing our Native American flute, where is home for our fingers? Uh, grab your flute and uh, get yourself into your most comfortable playing posture. Now, I know everybody's bodies are different, so your posture might be a little different from mine. I like to feel like I really have a solid foundation underneath me, so my feet are about shoulder width apart. Uh, I usually have my left foot a little bit in front of my right foot, but you know, if you want to do mountain pose basically and have them lined up, that's fine. Uh, whatever makes you feel solid and comfortable. Then I like to think about my air column being straight up and down so nothing is in the way. I'm not rigid. I'm not standing at attention. I just want a nice straight line so the air can go straight up, out, and into the flute. Now, I'd like for you to notice, I'm going to back up a little bit here, hope the sound doesn't go away entirely. What I'd like for you to notice is that I have a nice natural extension from the shoulder all the way down to the fingertips at the flute. Right. It's almost as though, you know, somebody is is handing you a grapefruit and you reach out to, to take it and just kind of rotate and put your hand on the flute and you're good to go. All right. So notice that my wrists are pretty much in line here. My fingers just have a, a calm, natural curve to them. And it's really my fingertips. The pads of my fingers are covering the flute. I'm not up on my fingertips. It's just the pads of my fingers. I think it's a good thing every now and then to just kind of close your eyes and go finger hole by finger hole and see if you can feel the entire rim of the finger hole uh, with the pads of your fingers. You don't have to choke the flute. You don't have to squeeze it. But if your fingers are home, you'll be able to feel the entire rim of the home. All right. So this is home for our fingers when we're playing our flutes. And we want our fingers to be able to get back home as quickly and as accurately as possible right at any point in the process. Now, there are a couple of things I've seen that happens for players really of all experience levels. I even catch myself every now and then that gets in the way of our fingers being able to get home quickly and accurately. Uh, the first one involves the wrists, and this can happen really for either hand. Uh, what I'd like for you to notice, lo look at my fingers. What I'm going to do is start to collapse my wrist so that it starts to go down this, this way. And as I do, notice what happens with my fingers. Right? The, the wrist is going to pull the fingers along with it so that eventually the fingers are not in line anymore. And in fact, the bottom finger has been partially pulled off of the finger hole. I think you can even see that. You'll certainly hear it. When I was expecting to hear. All right. Now, this does a couple of other things, too. I actually have to stretch with my ring finger now if I want to get that hole covered. And that takes more time. And it also starts to build some tension in the hand. And tension is not our friend. We never want to have any more tension than we need to to keep the flute from falling on the ground, right? So this can happen for either hand, and the effect is similar for either hand. If my top hand starts to collapse, the same thing happens. It takes my fingers with them and pulls them out of home position. So if you're expecting to hear this, and instead you hear this, or some variant of that, the first thing to check is, do you have all the finger holes covered? And sometimes the reason that isn't happening is that your wrists may have collapsed a little bit. So just do a body check every now and then. Make sure that you're staying in line. All right. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to get in really, really tight here. And I'm going to start just on the bottom note of the flute, the fundamental and then I'm going to move to the next note up. And what I'd like for you to pay attention to is my ring finger and specifically how little 
I actually have to make my ring finger move for the pitch to change. Watch. Okay, so my finger only moved a fraction of an inch and the hole was completely vented and the pitch changed. Also, my finger moved straight up and down, right? So I moved just a very, very short distance and that means my finger's right there and it only has a very, very, very short distance to move if it needs to get back and close that hole back up, right? Now, what I see happen for a lot of players and, and this, uh, uh, especially on the bottom hand, uh, is we start, you know, getting expressive and feeling good about things and start playing and and the next thing we know our fingers have left home right in fact our fingers may may not even know any longer where home is all right and if we want to to make a quick move yeah we might hear something like that instead of which is what we're after right so again, look how little my fingers actually have to move. Right? So we want things to feel secure. We want to have a sense of accuracy. So just check in with your hand every now and then. We, we aren't even aware that this is happening a lot of the time, that our hand will just kind of wander off into space and all of a sudden uh, we don't know how to get back to where we need to be, especially if we need to be, get there quickly. So, so the key tip here again is fingers stay home. All right. Then you can get back to where you need to be very quickly and accurately at any time. Now, I'm going to play a phrase that has a fairly large number of notes in it compressed into a small amount of time. And what I'd like for you to notice is how little my fingers actually have to move to make this happen. Now, imagine if my fingers have been wandering out here in space somewhere. There's no way I could make that lick happen. Now, even if you're not interested in playing lots of notes quickly, it's still good for your fingers to be able to get home quickly and accurately, right? Uh, it's much less work. You know, why do any more work than you need to do? And also, it prevents tension from building up in the arms and the hands. I can play comfortably like this all day long and I'm not gonna get tight, I'm not gonna get sore. So if you feel tension building in your arms or your hands or your wrists, first thing to do is shake it out a little bit, try to get rid of that tension, but then check back into your posture every now and then, and just make sure that your fingers are staying home and that everything's nicely aligned without too much tension. You may have noticed at the end of that little phrase that as my ring finger was going up and down real quickly, uh, my pinky finger was going with it. Physical reality, our ring finger and pinky finger are connected back in here. So it's actually very difficult for the ring finger to go up and down without pinky finger going with it. I trained as a pianist for a long time and we keyboard players spend a lot of time getting our fingers to work independently. So I can actually get my ring finger to go up and down pretty well without dragging pinky finger along. But really, it doesn't matter. You know, your pinky finger is going to want to go along unless you're also a keyboard player. And it's okay as long as pinky finger doesn't go wandering off into space and taking everybody else with it. Here's another reality. Our small muscles are much easier to train and get under control when we're little. So since my mother started me on piano lessons when I was five years old, I've had some extra practice getting these small muscle twitches going. If you've come to the flute later in life and it's your first musical instrument, it may take you a little extra time to gain control of the small muscles. So just be patient with yourself. You can start out trying things very, very slowly and then just incrementally day by day at a little bit more pace. And uh, eventually, probably even before you know it, 
you'll be able to get those small muscles to switch and, and make quick movements uh, very, very well. Now, I'm somebody who likes to move around a lot when I'm playing. And if I'm on stage with a band and it's a good rhythm section, man, I can I can be dancing. But what, what I will make sure that I do is I is to keep that wind column lined up and to keep the basic posture intact so that I don't lose the sound and so that I don't have extra tension building up, right? So we want our digits not to roam. We want our wrists not to collapse, right? And we want our fingers to stay home. All right, hope that helps out a little bit. Leave some comments or questions in the box if you want to pursue this further. You can get more playing tips at my Enjoying Your Native American Flute playlist. And I will look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.